Hi everyone. Today we'll be looking at uh, chain of thought prompting. So um, this method basically compares with uh, standard prompting. Um, so prompting is a paradigm where you have a large language model which is trained on a large amount of data and then um, you um, expose the model to prompts which would uh, allow this pre-trained model to uh, learn in context by, by looking at a few examples in few short learning or like one example in one short learning. And um, this paper claims that having a chain of thought which is a series of intermediate uh, reasoning steps, helps improve the performance of uh, models, large language models, that is, uh, in um, complex reasoning tasks. So um, this figure illustrates their um, idea. So in standard prompting, uh, you have one example here. And you're asking the model to um, answer uh, a question based on the example you've shown it before, right? So uh, the question is that uh, Roger has five tennis balls and he buys two more cans of tennis balls and each can has three tennis balls. How many tennis balls does he have now? So this is sort of a question which has like uh, some which the model needs to understand semantics translate this question into some sort of arithmetic equation and then give you the answer. And uh, But in standard prompting, you have a question and then you uh, basically tell the model that the answer is supposed to be 11. And the model is then supposed to learn from this one example and then uh, extrapolate it to the other, exam the other questions you ask. So um, here then you can ask a question. Uh, cafeteria had uh, 23 apples. If they used 20 to make lunch, and bought six more, how many apples do they have? Sort of similar uh, kind of question to the previous one, the example which was shown to the model. And uh, the model basically outputs 27. But um, in this paper, they say that uh, chain of thought prompting, it helps improve the performance of the model. So for the earlier uh, example, right, where uh, they just, in standard prompting, they just gave the right answer. Instead of just giving the right answer, if you um, list the steps which you took to get the answer, the model can uh, predict better. That's, that's the premise of uh, this paper, right? Um, so here uh, you have Roger started with five balls and two cans of three tennis balls. Um, uh, uh, two cans of uh, three tennis balls, each is six tennis balls, right? Uh, you multiply three times two. And then you eventually have to add 5 and 6, right, which is 11. And uh, that is the answer. So you then have the answer is 11. So instead of directly arriving at the answer, you have the list of steps which you had to follow to get the answer. And then they pose the same question. Uh, cafeteria had 23 apples. They used 20 to make lunch and bought 6 more. How many apples do they have, right? So now the model is going to uh, predict the series of steps it took to get the answer. So it says cafeteria had 23 apples originally. They used 20 to make lunch. So then they had 23 minus 20, which is 3. And they bought 6 more apples. So they have 3 plus 6, which is 9. So you have a series of uh, reasoning steps which are listed here. And um, they test this on um, a bunch of different uh, models. Uh, they use Lambda, GPT-3, and also uh, Palm. Um, and these models have uh, various uh, sizes. Um, they test various uh, parameters of these. Uh, so you have GPT-3, which can have like 350 million to 175 billion parameters. And then you have Lambda, which can have 422 to 137 billion parameters. And you have Palm. 8 billion to 540 billion parameters and they test it on a bunch of different tasks. We have seen the uh, arithmetic uh, problems before, the math word problems. Uh, they also test on some common sense reasoning tasks where you need some amount of background knowledge and some sort of reasoning to be able to answer. For example, uh, Sammy wanted to go where, where uh, the people were, where might he go? Right? You have options, racetrack, populated areas, a desert, apartment or roadblock. 
and the ans and then instead of just saying that the answer is b populated area you sort of give the model uh, reasoning steps the answer must be a place with a lot of people race tracks desert apartments and roadblocks don't have a lot of people but populated areas do and uh, so these are the uh, chain this is a chain of thought and then they also test it on some two other toy tasks such as uh, last letter concatenation. So here you are given uh, a name right, uh, with two to three words and you are supposed to take the last letter of each word and then concatenate it together. So here it is going to be YA. Right? Uh, instead of just providing the answer, they are telling the last letter of lady is Y and the last letter of Gaga is A and you concatenate them together to get Y A. And then last uh, task they have is a coin flip task. right? So um, they ask a question where you say that the coin is heads up and Mabel flips the coin. Um, Shalonda does not flip the coin. Is the coin still heads up? The answer is no. Right? Um, and then here they provide the chain of thought for it. The coin was flipped by Mabel. So the coin was flipped one time, which is an odd number. The coin started heads up. So after the odd number of flips, it will be tails up. And the answer is no. So the way they um, test this is, they use different data sets for each of these uh, reasoning tasks. And um, for, uh, in each of the uh, data set, they basically take eight uh, examples from the training part and um, they write the chain of thoughts for each of these eight examples and then they test it on the uh, evaluation split of the data set right and um, they have some interesting results right so um, this is an example of the uh, of the math reasoning task right and um, they vary the scale of the model. So uh, you have all the way from 42 million to 540 billion parameters and these are and they, they vary um, the type of language model. You have Lambda, GPT-3 and Palm but they keep the prompts uh, the same across these um, different language models and across data. Uh, uh, so there are eight different examples which are picked from each data set and um, they keep the same examples for each of the language model. And then you can see that um, in the very um, low, so, so this is the um, prior state of the art, right? And in the very low parameter models, like 42 million, um, chain of thought almost seems to hurt performance, right? If you look at these examples here. And um, the performance of chain of thought seems to, there seems to be a threshold after which the performance, uh, I think around 8 if you see, right? The performance starts improving. And then at around 137 billion parameters, you see that chain of thought is sort of better than um, the standard prompting methods, right? And this difference is sort of uh, is more in some data sets compared to the others. And uh, with 540 billion parameters, almost always uh, chain of thought is better than the standard prompting. And then sometimes it even exceeds the state of the art. So that's what they see here. And then they have um, ablation uh, studies uh, to sort of understand why this performance increase is happening. Um, so eventually like in the math um, arithmetic reasoning uh, kind of task, you would have to boil down the natural language text into some sort of equation. So um, one ablation study they do is instead of giving these explicit chain of thought, what we can do is you can just give an equation, the, uh, the final equation uh, which, which all those sentences boil down to and uh, would that uh, have any difference in the performance, right? And uh, they compare lambda and palm in the um, paper. I believe the appendix has some more results but uh, here you can see that if you just use the equation only, you don't see much of an increase 
although when you again go towards the larger language models um, even just giving an equation is uh, better than standard prompting and then um, so so this basically says that maybe um, having these reasoning steps in natural language um, sort of helps drive the performance up compared to just giving the equation out um, and the next is variable compute only so here what they do is instead of having um, all these tokens for prompts right uh, they say that um, you probably have more intermediate tokens and maybe that is influencing uh, the answer which is produced by the language model so instead of having these intermediate tokens let's just have some um, dots right uh, what, what happens to the output and here they see that that doesn't uh, really change um, change the performance of the model significantly so um, there is some utility in having these uh, natural language sentences and then uh, the last is um, they, they, they are basically evaluating if um, the assumption that you know having these uh, chain of thoughts these extra steps or this uh, these sentences uh, help the language model access its knowledge better right so in order to test this what they do is um, they basically uh, give the um, answer first and then they give the chain of thought and um, so here you do have you're giving the answer first and then the chain of thought and if uh, if you just require the chain of thought for the language model to access its uh, to access its pre-trained knowledge and give better performance you should get good performance with this kind of a setting as well where you have the answer first and then the chain of thought right but then you see that the performance is not that uh, uh, is not improved compared to standard prompting right saying that uh, you do need to have these sort of steps where you have the reason first and then the answer that sort of improves the performance significantly and then again they evaluate the robustness of it right uh, because here um, what they've done is from each data set you have um, eight examples which are picked and then you have chain of thoughts written for each of those eight examples so now what they um, do is they have different annotators writing this um, and then they see if um, there's a difference in performance with different annotators because prompts are sometimes sensitive to the input which is uh, given right so they are, they are very brittle and also um, like what kind of examples do you pick does that have a bearing on the performance of the the eventual performance of the uh, model on on particular data sets right for that what they do is they random pick uh, eight exam they randomly pick eight examples from the res from the respective data sets right they are use they are evaluating two different data sets here and they see that um, it the having different annotators um, uh, reason out these uh, steps does not uh, significantly affect the performance and um, in either case it's better than standard uh, prompting right and then um, and also like the examples these are these are the uh, values based on the uh, eight examples which are used a few short examples which are used so um, here basically you can see that uh, even though you pick different sets of examples um, the results are not hugely uh, different so so this basically says that chain of thought is robust to um, different annotations and also to different uh, few short examples right and they also do this on um, they, they see a similar trend on common sense reasoning um, where they see that for very small, um, mo actually this is a relative term, right? The smaller the size of the model, um, I think there's like a sweet spot of like 8 uh, billion parameters. Anything before that seems like chain of thought is uh, hurting the model's performance. But then as you increase the size of the model, um, chain of thought seems to uh, perform better compared to uh, standard prompting methods. And the same with uh, symbolic reasoning as well. You see that um, chain of thought is like better than uh, standard prompting. 
so in the symbolic reasoning they also evaluate the ability of these uh, methods um, to generalize so what they do is they do this um, testing with in domain and out of domain examples so if you recall in the symbolic reasoning they use this last letter concatenation as one task where you have to basically concatenate the last letters from each word and uh, they use this coin flip example right uh, as another task where you are basically asked some questions on uh, what happens if you flip a coin a bunch of times right so uh, for both these they have this in domain and out of domain right for the um, last letter concatenation they basically uh, expose the model to examples where you have two words right and uh, you show how to concatenate the last letters and um, while testing they basically use out of domain examples where you have three words and you would have to concatenate the last letters and in the coin flip example also uh, they have two coin flips in the training setup and in the uh, test setup they have four coin flips and they see that um, the performance is uh, not doesn't drop significantly um so if you look at the um, the letter concatenation example right um there is a certain drop in the performance when you do an out of distribution uh, test but um, it's still better than uh, chance probability right so um they are still able to generalize uh, well on an out of distribution data set and uh, the same trend is seen in um the coin flip example as well although you can see that for standard prompting there is a considerable drop in performance but for chain of thought the drop is not as much pronounced right um so this basically says that you can generalize between uh you, you can have like unseen chains of thought as well uh, during testing right you don't have to cover all different chains of thoughts in the few examples which you expose to the model and um yeah and that was the paper right um so to to sum up what was covered in this paper uh, they say that chain of thought prompting and usually prompting techniques uh, replace fine tuning right and it's much more efficient to have uh, prompting compared to fine tuning where you have to change all the parameters in your model and um chain of thought is a way to enhance performance of these large language models even further compared to standard prompting and um, and this is specifically suitable to tasks which involve some sort of reasoning uh, be it arithmetic symbolic or even common sense and um the model scale plays like we've seen before plays a crucial role where you have the larger the language model the better it can uh, benefit from using chain of thought prompting and uh, yeah and i think further directions of research would be to uh, see why chain of thought is not working on like smaller models um but uh, yeah that that was the main takeaway of uh, when to use chain of thought uh, prompting